everybody. Hope you're having a nice day. Hi, so we've got a bit of a special vlog for you today. Um, we were approached by a company called Spoonflower. And if you don't know who Spoonflower are, they are a company that print designs directly onto different types of fabric. They've got a massive, ridiculously huge library of fabric. And you can also design your own prints and upload them and print them yourself. They, um, they were based in America, but they now also have um, some offices and a shipping location in Berlin, which is great for us in the UK, which means if you do want to order some fabric, you can get it a lot quicker. So when they got in touch with us, um, we jumped at the chance to work with them because we thought that the massive selection of the designs that they've got and the different types of fabric would work really well with some of our patterns. Um, the Spoonflower Gang were also nice enough to pass on a bit of a discount to everyone that watches this video. Um, so we've got a little code for you for 10% off for the next month and we'll pop it in the comments below. So we're just going to show you now what we've made. We're welcoming a new team member to the vlog today. This is Lydia. And um, you might see Lydia if you come to our Clapham or Islington shops on a Sunday. And the rest of the days of the week, she is a freelance graphic designer. Mm -hmm. Did I get that right? Yes. Excellent. <laughs> what have you made, Lydia? Um, so I made a rosy Betty, a rosy top with the thick straps, um, and then a Betty skirt uh, in the cotton poplin fabric. Excellent. How was the poplin to work with? It was really easy. I'm still quite a beginner sewer, so I wanted to stay with something quite familiar uh, but it's really it's light but it's uh, yeah really easy to work with and doesn't move around at all. Nice did you make any changes to the pattern at all? Um, apart from putting the rosy top on the Betty skirt uh, I didn't make any changes um, I think I brought it in slightly around the bust area because I didn't use the boning um, but apart from that no, no other changes. Nice easy sew there. Yes very easy. <laughs> Excellent and what made you choose this particular print? Um, so a lot of my wardrobe is very brightly coloured, but uh, they're all solid colours. Um, so I wanted something that would fit in quite nicely with all of that. Uh, and red is my favourite colour, um, as is probably quite evident. Um, and yeah, it was just a very obvious choice once I saw it and I, I knew I had to have it. Excellent. Great. And it's such a lovely dress and such yes. good twirling potential as yes. well, which we love. Yes. It does like to do a Marilyn Monroe in, on the tube or in the street, but uh, I quite like that. So. <laughs> So now we've got Nicole with her latest make. Nicole, what did you sew up? Um, so I've made the Leah dress, but as a top. Um, so I extended the bodice by about 15 centimetres, um, maybe a bit more for the hem. And I extended the darts as well. So beyond the waist point, I kind of did have to bodge it a little bit. Um, and from where the seam line is, I redrew the bottom of the dart from that. So it's kind of like an internal dart here. Um, but other than that, I didn't really make any changes to the pattern. Um, yeah, it's a pretty simple make. Nice. Yes, must be quite quick to sew up. Yeah, really well. quick. Bar the buttonholes, which <laughs> weren't that friendly on this fabric when I got one wrong. Um, but I think as long as you interface your facings, um, that definitely helps. Great. And what's the fabric that you used? Um, so I've used the Sweet Pea Gauze, um, which was really good to work with. It's kind of shifty when you're cutting it out. So I did use a rotary cutter and I cut everything singly, mm -hmm. um, mostly just to make sure I'd got the pattern placement right and the grain okay. was straight because a lot of the prints can end up off grain on that fabric. Um, so don't choose anything that's got quite a linear print because you'll see it. Um, but other than that, it was really nice to sew up. Um, it washed really well, the colours are really vivid. Um, and I didn't notice any shrinkage, which was that's a warning cool, on the fabric. It's like a 14% shrinkage, but didn't really notice anything. So just overorder anyway, just to be on the safe side. <laughs> and what drew you to that particular print? Um, so I was looking through the vast array of florals um, that were on Spoonflower. Um, and I wanted kind of like a small floral, but that was quite like punchy in colour. Um, so the seller was, I think her username was Shop Cabin, um, and she's got tons and tons of florals. Um, but be careful with the scale of those, because some of them come in like massive scales. Um, and what I did was I sort of compared it on screen to how much, how big that would be on my body. So I measured out sort of like, I think it's like eight inches they give you, and like compared what that would kind of look like. Um, if that mm. makes sense. Yeah, it's great. And I think it's turned out the perfect yeah, scale yeah, for, that, for the shirt as um, well. I think for this fabric, you can't have any prints that are too dense. You have mm. to kind of have a white background. Um, but I think it worked really well. I do really like okay. it. So, Heike, what have you made for us? I've made a Molly top dress. Obviously, the dress version. Because um, I really needed a quick sew. Because um, um, I was a bit in a rush. And I found this gorgeous 
pretzel print. <laughs> and um, yeah, I just really, really love it. And it was a super quick, so um, cutting and mm -hmm. making it was around an hour or so. So if, you, if you're if you really, really desperate to get something new into your wardrobe and want to go out the same evening, <laughs> make the molly. <laughs> and yeah, I just like that it's not too fitted. And I yeah. actually made it a slightly bit wider than mm -hmm. the pattern and I've shortened the sleeves a little bit and the length and yeah I made the neck band a bit what's the word a bit narrower yes that's the one yeah sorry German <laughs> hence pretzels <laughs> yeah my grandfather um was a baker and I started making pretzels from a very early age on so yeah my love for pretzels you can see in the fabric and yeah excellent I, and what was the fabric type that you used? I chose the organic cotton knit because yeah, I, I find it actually quite important to wear organic fabrics when, when you're not wearing any like slip-on dress underneath or something like this, especially in summer. And I, um, yeah, that was the reason why I went for this one. And yeah, it came out quite nicely despite the fact it doesn't really have much recovery, but with any loose fitting garment and patterns, it works quite well. Were there any other so over it patterns that you think the organic knit would work for? I think the cowl neck dress would work quite nicely because um, even though um, it's a mid-weight fabric, it still would drape nicely around the neckline. So yeah, Excellent. that should work. That's the next one on the list then. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so we've got another newbie to the vlog. This is Ellie, who you also may have seen in our Islington shop on a Sunday. Ellie also helps with our patterns and is soon to be helping with our teaching as well. So Ellie, what have you made today? Um, I've made the collots with the Betty top, so I've turned it into a jumpsuit. Um, it was quite an easy make because um, like the collots are very easy to make up, but I had to do a bit of kind of fixing to make the darts match up because although both have um, darts at the front and the back, they're both in different positions, so I had to move, I think, the Betty in and the clock ones out. Mm. Uh, but aside from that, it was kind of quite an easy make. Nice. Um, I also added a pop on the top of the shoulder just so you can get into it because it's got a side zip and otherwise you wouldn't be able to kind of get into the shoulders. Yeah, that's the thing with play suits. They're yeah. really nice when they're on quite a struggle. To like put on over the top, yeah. <laughs> and which fabric did you use? Uh, the Silky Fail. Um, it's quite nice. It has quite a nice drape to it. Mm. It is um, a little bit thicker than I thought it was going to be. So it's maybe more of like a spring autumn jumpsuit rather than like a high summer jumpsuit. Um, but it has like the, it takes the print really nicely, mm. uh, which is good. Like the depth of the color is really good. Um, online, it, I thought it was going to be more of like a block black, but you actually get a lot more of kind mm. of like the marble effect in the print, which is good. Nice. And was there any particular decision on why you chose this print? Um, just speak to you? Yeah, I wanted like an abstract print, but a lot of them, because of the way that um, it's like a repeat pattern, they go kind of like a kaleidoscope, whereas this seemed to be much more of like an even kind of distribution of the abstract pattern. Perfect. No, I think it looks great. It's a really nice matchup. Yeah. yeah, thank you. So vlog regular Louise is back. Louise, Hello. what have you made? Um, I've made the Charlotte dress. Um, which I'm very excited about. As soon as it came out, I wanted to make it. Like I saw the pictures and I was like, that, I want to make a boom dress out of that. Um, so uh, I really like it. It's like a really feminine, beautiful pattern. I feel really like sort of voluptuous in it. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it's um, perfect. It, yeah, I just really feel beautiful in it. And like, I'm a mum of two. Most of the time I probably feel like a scruff bag. And like in this right now, I just feel like, Oh, like, does that make sense? I just feel so beautiful. Like, you may not agree, but I do. No, um, <laughs> and it was like a, I was a bit daunted by it because the pattern's got quite a lot of pieces. And, you know, I was a little bit worried, but actually it was such a quick sew. Mm. Like, it was actually remarkably quicker than I thought it was going to be. I did it in one evening, like most of it in one evening. So that was like four hours. I just, I sewed up pretty much the whole dress. Um, I just really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, Great. I just really enjoyed making it. Great. Um, Did you make any changes to the pattern or is it straight out of the packet for this? Um, I had to, so I used a slightly smaller top for the top half, mm -hmm. so the top is an 18 um, and then I had to sort of ease it out to the 20 for the skirt mm -hmm. and then when I sewed it up originally with the, because of the pockets, which I love a pocket, um, it uh it was like a little bit saddle baggy so i bought i unpicked it and then brought the seams out a little bit further but i think it's because of this fabric does that make sense like the fabric's a little bit bulkier um if i use like a a, a less bulky fabric it wouldn't be an, have been yeah, an issue have but yeah really nice 
So just really, yeah, just generally enjoyed sewing it. I will make it again. I really Excellent. enjoyed it. And I love this print. What drew you to the otters? Um, I don't think there's enough cutesy animal, not cutesy animal, but like, like animal print, like um, with the sort of weirder animals. Does that make sense? I was looking for a sloth, didn't find one that I liked enough because sometimes, yeah, there was ones where it was like a really nice jungle print, but because of the repeat, it didn't just quite flow. Mm -hmm. um, and then with this otter print, because they're like sort of swimming and they're sort of moving in the water, it kind of, the repeat kind yeah. of works. And with this dress, I think it works as well because of the, like the print's quite movable and all that sort of stuff. And there's a lot of like stuff going on with the dress, with the folds and all that. Sort of. It sort of lets it move like water, especially yeah. with this skirt half. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just, I saw the otters and it was love. They were, that was just li literally it. I just don't think there's enough otter fabric in the world, like, honestly. There we go. Take note, pattern designers and fabric designers. Otters. And a good sloth, please. Good sloth. So, Becca's chosen the, possibly the cosiest outfit of us all. Yeah, I'm taking Dress Down Friday to a whole new level. I uh, thought I'd come to work in my pyjamas with my, with my panda today. <laughs> and what fabric have you made yours out of? So... Yeah, when I was looking at all the different fabrics that you could get, um, I quite wanted a cotton fabric, something nice and breathable. Um, so I was looking at the gauze and I saw a few blog posts of people who'd made things with the gauze as well. And I thought, oh, that looks nice. Um, and then I spent days looking at all the different prints. There's a, there's a lot of prints. Um, and I, I was inspired by Louise and her otters and so I also have an otter print fabric. Um, but when they arrived, um, I would say it's really good to look at the little size chart that come, that's on like the print description mm. um, because they were a lot bigger than I was expecting, <laughs> um, which is my own fault. I didn't see, you know, how big they were going to be. <clears throat> so I thought it's probably best it wasn't really outerwear and maybe more like cosy, you know, pyjama wear. Perfect. Yeah. So that's what I went for. Excellent. And what are the patterns that you've used to make your pyjamas? So for the pyjama bottoms it's our ultimate pajamas standard so and that comes with uh, either a full length option or a shorts option and the shorts option I did lob quite a lot off the bottom but I am I am short so I did take about eight centimeters off the short length I think mm -hmm. um, and then the top is the Alex shirt dress um, which is from the uh, capsule wardrobe the ebook so what I did for that instead was I just I made the shirt length and then I cut the sleeves shorter. Yeah. Perfect. And they work really well together as a pyjama set. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can, you know, make your own coordinated set yes. of pyjamas. Excellent. And how was the fabric to work with? It was good. It was like, it's, it's sort of, um, you know, some fabrics can sort of stick a little bit to mm. themselves. It's got that kind of quality about it. So you didn't need, to, I didn't need to use a lot of pins when I was sewing it. But sometimes when I was trying to adjust it, it didn't adjust. But it pressed really well. Um, and also when I washed it, it softened up a bit as well, Great. which is good to Great. know. No, it's perfect. And I look forward to seeing you these, in these every Friday. Oh, <laughs> I'll be here. Well, I've got a little top tip as well. Ooh, yeah, go um, ahead for the ribbon. Mm -hmm. um, so when, if you're putting ribbon in your pajamas um, and you want a nice clean edge, you don't want it to all fray out. Mm -hmm. uh, when you cut the edge of the ribbon, um, you can just get a little lighter and just pass it quickly mm. over the end uh, and that will keep the edge uh, from unraveling. That is an excellent tip. Top tip. Thank you. So now Rose, it's your turn. <laughs> so what have you made? Well, I have made um, a Leah dress top with a scoop neckline and to put them with the ultimate collots. So it's a Lisa Comfort so over it mashup. Um, to do the scoop neck, it was really simple. I just kind of, I took the pattern and put a really big scoop on the neckline. I had to make a couple of trials just to make sure it wasn't too low or too high. But other than that, um, the Leah top half is just the same. And then it is, yeah, just our ultimate clots with the waistband in the middle. I completely forgot to move the darts around as Ellie talked about, um, but I would recommend that because it gives it a nice line between the two yeah I think with the print you can't yeah you yeah I was hoping the ditzy it. print yeah, kind of, going, it sort of hides it a bit get away with it it's only because you pointed it out that I've noticed <laughs> yeah. uh, how did you find the fabric like how did you the fabric it? um it was I think other people have mentioned it was a little heavier than I was expecting it's kind of the same weight of our as our luxury crepe if you've used that um, it actually sewed up quite nicely but I wanted I used a really fine needle on the sewing machine yeah. and fine pins as well and I did find a, a few marks where I'd pinned 
So um, I would recommend maybe pinning along the seam allowance within the seam allowance so you know that you're not going to get marks on your final garment. But most of those, if you give it a really good iron, they did go away quite a lot. And the nicest thing, I think, was the depth of the colour. This, these fabrics, so myself and Louise yeah. are on the same um, fabric base and it lost no colour in the wash. No, I washed it. I put chuck some colour catchers in. No issue at all. It was like, yeah, it's just so strong yeah. colours. I think it's really nice that you know that the print that you've chosen is exactly what you're going to yeah. end up wearing. And for our last make of the day, Alex, what have you brought to us? Um, I've made the ultimate collapse in the silky fail um, fabric, which um, is the same as Louise and Rosie and Ellie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I love collots. Um, yeah, I lived in them last last summer, so that when we brought out collots pattern, I was like, yes, um, <laughs> very exciting. This is the second pair I've made. Uh, and what drew you to this particular print? Um, it was really difficult. Um, choosing. There's so much choice on there. I was a bit overwhelmed. I wanted something that was abstract. I'm not really um, a florals person usually. Um, and I, I just like the simplicity of this print and the colours, like a little bit of um, pink and purple, but not too overwhelming. Mm. Um, and a black background keeps it really kind of wearable with loads of different stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's what you want. I think you could go absolutely crazy. Yeah. On, um, on spoon flour. I nearly did. <laughs> yeah. This could have been a very different video. <laughs> yeah. At the last minute, I thought, no. <laughs> Pick something that you'll wear. Um, but yeah, I think these are interesting enough um, to, you know, kind of warrant using mm. spoon flour because, yeah, it's, um, it's amazing on there. But yeah, they're still Every day cash. wearable. Yeah. Um, have you got any other patterns that you'd recommend for the Silky Fail fabric? Um, yes. Um, I would recommend something like the kimono jacket. It would work really well for the 1940s wrap dress. Um, or if you just wanted to really simple sew, like the silk hammy would be mm. great as well. Um, for me, because um, this fabric is 100% polyester and it's like that little bit heavier, I think, yeah, as Ellie said, it's definitely a kind of spring, autumn yeah. kind of fabric. I think these collets with some tights will come into their own in winter, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm, I think they're kind of a yeah, year-round make. Yeah, it's a really versatile fabric. Yeah, think. yeah. So have you got any of this fabric left over for some other makes? Um, I do, yeah. I managed to squeeze out um, this from, yeah, I think under two metres and I had three. Um, and I saw on um, our Sew Over It um, Makers Facebook group, um, one of our customers, Adele, she made this amazing kind of faux jumpsuit that was the ultimate mm -hmm. collots and the true bias Ogden cami, and it was great. So I think, yeah, and that's what my extra fabric is going to be used on. Excellent. Look forward to seeing it. Oh, yeah. <laughs>